Good. There's a week from tomorrow, you're going to be playing against, I know. Playing against a pretty good team, too. I mean, so it's, yeah. it's jumping right into it, huh? Three really good teams right out of the gate, um, you know, eight days away. And, you know, it's uh, we're not, you ask a coach, they'll, we'll never say that we're ready to go. Um, we just hope that when the bell rings or when they say play ball, that, you know, we can get out of our own way and, and, uh, and play good baseball. But, um, you know, we're, we're, we're looking forward to it, very much looking forward to getting out to Arizona and seeing a new uniform or different uniform on the other side of the diamond. And even though they're really good teams, I think it's going to be a great test for us. And uh, ready or not, here it comes. Do you see a folk? I mean, when the season is kind of approaching, do kids get more locked in in practice or have you not seen that? You hope to. Yeah, I think they do. You know, I mean, we've got a really good bunch of kids here. And, um, you know, there's there's frustration today and that, you know, we're missing signs. We're making mistakes that we shouldn't be making, you know, a week, a week ahead of uh, the season. And that's the stuff that drives me crazy because we haven't done a, a good enough job. I blame myself for not doing a good enough job of communicating that over the course of you know September, October, November, December, now January and February. So um, we got to cram all that in. And I know they're trying. Uh, we've just got a lot of new bodies. We've got a lot of a lot of new faces, um, guys that have some good experience. But a lot of that experience has come in other programs, whether it be. Uh, di you know, Division One programs or junior college programs that just have different languages that they speak. Right. Uh, we're teaching similar things, but it's just different languages. So that's kind of the biggest hurdle that we've had, and we saw some of that today. Right. What's your, what are your like strengths and weaknesses you think going into the season? I like I like our pitching um, breadth of depth, if that makes sense. We we don't have um, a no doubt number one or. Um, you know, high-end starters, but we have a lot of nice pieces. We have a lot of different looks. We have some guys that throw from different arm angles and some a good balance of lefties and righties. Um, a lot of guys that can be very effective for two and three innings at a time. Um, we don't have that real, you know, that guy's going to go seven, but that's kind of the trend of baseball now anyway. So a lot of matchup ability. We also have a lot of two-way players, so I think that's going to be a strength. Our versatility is going to be a strength. Coach, can you talk about the development of Ben Maycock over the past couple years and maybe possibly the role that he's going to be given? This yeah, year? we. I mean, you, we're not supposed to root as coaches but uh, or as players for other players, I suppose, but um, Benny is, has just so much respect from, from his teammates and from his coaching staff. Nobody works harder than him in the weight room, on the field, and, and even in the classroom. Um, he uh, He's a guy that we're all just really rooting for to get off to a good start and and really solidify himself in and we're going to give him a chance to do that you know he's still got a lot to learn but he has developed a lot you know he's he's uh, he'd look pretty good in the NFL combine he's that athletic and that strong uh, he certainly would look the part and um, that fast got a great arm he's got real light tower power it's just consistency you know that that has been his his uh, biggest weakness but he's starting to get more consistent and I think the more belief we show in him hopefully the more belief he has in himself and um, and that could be really could be really beneficial for our ball club this year because he's got a lot of a, a really high ceiling and a lot of potential and I know he's got you know so he's going to have 34 teammates and four coaches that are really rooting for him to, to do the job. Me as well. Yeah. What can you say about how Pat was handled being sidelined? Uh, you know what? The Winkle, the Winkle boys are first class, you know, and Patrick, uh, he's got to be hurting, you know. I mean, mentally 19 years old and to have his season, you know, ended before it gets started, um, that's really hard for anybody, and let alone a guy just in his second year of college. He battled some injuries last year and handled them with a plum. I'm sure that he's spent some nights, you know, crying in the pillow, so to speak, and feeling sorry for himself, but he's never shown it on the field, in the classroom, in the community. He's just found a way to help in different ways and add value in different ways. He's already excited about a, a campus tour that he's going to give to a recruit on Sunday. He's going to go represent us at a, at a banquet at the end of February when he can't practice. And, he, he can't do enough, you know, to, to try to add value that way. He's restricted, so he's handled it. He couldn't handle it any better than he's handled it. And uh, we're going to miss him, you know, behind the plate and in the batter's box, but he's still such a big part of our program. 
about that. I was talking to a couple of those Amity kids about the culture that they formed. Mm. You've had quite a few, probably Vinny and Aaron. Yeah. And you have assistant coach that's from there. What, what, what is it? What can you, how would you describe an Amity kid? Yeah, so Sal Capola does a super job. You know, he, he has his kids playing the right way. And he's, he's developed, you know, I think that town, well, Woodbridge, Orange, they've done a fantastic job. One of the things that really sticks out to me is they, they tend to, keep their kids together in town playing for for that town for amity and um you know the orange legion program has a rich history too and they all play at old tavern field which doesn't look like much to an outsider but when you're seven years old and you're maybe playing t-ball or instructional league or you're a nine-year-old little leaguer you can then go up to the legion field and see you know, those 17 and 18 and 19 year olds hitting home runs on the big field and they're all right there in the same area. So I think it's natural just kind of through osmosis, so to speak, the, the little kids want to be like the big kids and um, little boys want to grow up to be big boys. So I think that really helps helps their uh, culture in that town. But uh, Sal has done it. He's a fantastic coach. and. Um, we've been, yeah, we have been beneficiaries of, of a lot of really good Amity ball players. And you're right, Devin Valensky's doing a fantastic job as our director of operations right now too. He works, nobody works harder than he does. So we've, uh, Sal jokes that we should be the Yukon Spartans, but I wouldn't go quite that far just yet. What do I talked to Andy about his brothers at, at Yale, twin brother. And yeah. Andy. Are there plans to get them on the schedule next year so that the brothers? Yeah, I would love, other? I would love to get back on the schedule. You know, we've had. The Ivy League guys are just tough because they can only do the one midweek. There's you know, my first, my earliest memory ever, three years old, uh, being lifted over the fence at Yale Field uh, to go join my father's state championship title. Um, they're carrying them off the field in 1975. So there's very few places I like to be more than at Yale Field. And so I'm hopeful, hopeful that we can get them back on. They had scheduled us so early in the season that it just didn't make sense for us and they could never reschedule. So I, John Stuper and I have a long, long time relationship and a good relationship. I'm hoping that, that we can work something out so those two, two guys can square off. Although it'd probably be hell for mom and dad because <laughs> nobody wins. They're, they're rooting for a tie. One of the last times that we had uh, brothers face off against each other, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Ahmed were happy because the game actually did end in darkness and it was a tie. <laughs> so they're the only people that were happy on the planet. What about Andy? He talked about he was pretty optimistic about having a bit bigger role this year. What, what, what are your thoughts on Yeah, that? yeah. You know, sure. Andy's done a really good job. You know, what was, what's been frustrating, I think, um, for us was we had sent him out in the, in the uh, summertime, and his defense was always his strong suit. And offensively, he struck out too much, a lot, too many fly balls. He corrected that in the summer, and he really did a really good job in the fall of swinging the bat and not striking out and putting the ball in play, using his speed, using the things that he does really well and being a pest on the bases. But he, yeah, I think he'd be the first to tell you, but he kind of stunk with the glove. So he, he had one thing going and the other thing was, was lacking. This preseason, he's had both really clicking. So looking forward to, to he's, he's got, um, he's, he's one of a few candidates that's gonna get the early look at shortstop right now. He's probably the leading candidate. Um, you know, early in the season to get our first real, real look at it, and um, you know, he's another guy that everybody reaches for. He's a coach on the field. He knows whatever, not just what he should be doing at shortstop, but what every, all the other eight guys should be doing in the in the moment on a bunt play or whatever kind of play we have going. So um, he'd be a real advantage. He'd be a real advantage to the coaching staff if he can hold down that job because he, he gives us another dimension. What do you see about Kevin Ferrer's role? Yeah, Kevin. Kevin's tool is his bat. You know, he's and he can run too. Um, he's been a little bit injury prone in the preseason, so we haven't gotten a great look at um, at him. A little bit. You know, it's been fits and starts. He's got a hamstring and a back, and he's kind of battled those throughout his career. But um, he can really hit. I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna find a way. And if he's not starting opening day, he's probably gonna get some starts at DH. Um, you may see him in left field. He's improved uh, his his defense. It's still got a ways to go, though. I wouldn't consider him an everyday outfielder just yet, but he's he's um, he is developing. Another guy who's puts his nose to the grindstone. Last year, he used that time that he wasn't on our roster <clears throat> and redshirted to really improve on his own. Took pride in, in getting his work in and never missing a lift, and got his body in better shape too. Um, had a very good summer, really good summer. And summer baseball is so important for us 
in development for those redshirt guys. Carson Cross was a guy way back that took advantage of that first summer. Um, we've had some guys that have gone on to professional baseball that didn't play as freshmen for us, but really took advantage of summer collegiate baseball. Kevin's one of those guys, I think, that they could have a future. Um, but there's a knack for finding holes even today. He finds a hole in the infield. He has a knack for putting a barrel on the ball and having it you know, hit him where, hit him where they ain't. He does that very well. So um, never looks like he's overmatched in the batter's box. The first pitcher I saw when I got here was a more of a cross kid. Yeah. I, I, I think he's doing so far. You know, Andrew's going to be a really good pitcher for us, too. Uh, he's a guy who's a short burst guy now, you know, more than more than four or five bat, you know, an inning, five, six batters max, and he just lets it rip, and it's fun to watch. He's got all the histrionics with the delivery, but he's able to repeat his delivery. He's got an athletic delivery. Um, there's a little flair to it, and there's a confidence with, with the way he goes about things, a little swagger to him, and you need that as a freshman if you're going to succeed. Um, just got to get better at holding runners, a little bit better off the mound with his, with his PFPs and his defense. He's got some work to do there, but I really like the way he attacks hitters. He's got a really good breaking ball, too, so tough to square him up. His stuff's moving, and there's a lot of body parts flying, but uh, he had a really good um, summer coming into to our program in a, in a collegiate league. He's playing against college kids before even before he even was a college kid, so that's an advantage too, and he had a good summer there. The new field, obviously, is something that's been a long time in the making, yeah. but what's it like for you to go buy it and see it kind of progress? I've tried not to go buy it now for because it's just, it's like, um, I'm not gonna believe it until I actually hear play ball, but I've heard that Brick went up on the press box this week. I've heard that some of the grandstands uh, have been installed today. Um, but I'm trying not to even look. I just I got to stay focused on us missing signs before I can really <laughs> treat myself to to going up to the behind McMahon uh, Hall and looking down on that gorgeous field. We've seen it a few times, and uh, I just can't wait. I think I'm going to be very emotional when that place finally opens, knowing that Doug and Sheila Elliott will be in the stands and and have been with us, you know, in lockstep since 2003 in every effort to make that happen. So. I'm going to feel great not just for our current players, but for everybody that's helped build it. And um, it's a long list of people that uh, have helped build it. Coach, Seth Cohen looked pretty impressive today pitching. Um, I'm sorry, Josh? Josh Cohen. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, can you talk about his battle back um, from the cover? Yeah. That was probably his best outing. Um, you know, he struck out the side, you know, and, and he looked really good. He was coming right at the hitters, threw a couple good breaking balls. But the fastball, they were not seeing at all. He was throwing it by. Some guys got some bad swings and misses, or good swings and misses from his perspective. Um, really, really courageous kid, obviously. Um, you know, kid who's beaten cancer at a young age. You beat cancer at any age, you're courageous. And um, He's not afraid to talk about it. He's been really helpful with other people, other young people that have uh, gotten some news similar to the kind that he has. Um, he doesn't shy away from it. He really sees himself as uh, as an advocate for those people and a partner and helping them get better. And he's got a real maturity when it comes to, you know, how can you, he's had to grow up really fast. So, um, you know, he's got to get a little bit more mature on the mound. Um, but uh, no, I, I, I really, I, I think his upside is tremendous. He throws it really hard. At a young age, he's got to kind of refine, you know, his command a bit. Uh, he's got some work to do there, but uh, I'm really proud. Just I'm proud to just be around him. I'm proud to be his coach. Any any cancer survivor, I mean, that, that's a that's a big big deal, and he should be very proud of himself. And his family, I know, is very proud of him too. His sister's on campus. That that certainly helped us get him too. Um, but uh, he came to a camp. He was a guy who's low 80s. Didn't really, but he really knew how to pitch. You know, he's mixing mixing in and out and hitting his spots a little bit better than he hits his spots now with that cannon of an arm, but it was low 80s. And Coach McDonald had said, hey, I really like what you, you do, but you're only, you know, 82 or whatever it was at that time. And he says, well, Coach, you know, I just finished cancer treatment. And immediately his eyes lit up, my ears perked up and said, he's going to be the first guy we go see uh, in his junior year. And uh, so we did. We went out and saw him several times. And uh, he kept getting better and better and better. And he wanted us. That was cool, too. He, he wanted to be a Husky. And we certainly wanted him when we heard that story and, and knew that there was going to be a lot more in the tank and starting to see that come out now.